Hey everyone, my name is Adisha Netika Hasaral and welcome to Learn with Adisha. Today, we're going to explore the Earth. Currently, the Earth looks like this with tons of airlines and satellites going around. But what did it look like in the past? Back then, life was actually pretty simple. And we travelled back to the start of the Earth, the Hadean Eon. At this time, the Earth was covered in red hot stuff, even volcanoes, and it was very dangerous. Here is the Archean Eon. Here is the Protozoic Eon. Each time, in the Archean Eon, it's colder, a bit colder than the Hadean Eon. And same thing with the Protozoic Eon. It's colder than the Archean Eon. And water start to, starts to get formed. At this time, life has already started blooming around Earth. Going forward, we find the Phanerozoic Eon. Scientific names are hard. Basically, this is the very eon that had the Earth cool down to its max so that life could form. As well as that, more complex versions of life formed, like frogs, trees, all that stuff. Even lizards. This is when dinosaurs first started birds and we come to the modern era let's check out the inside up here we have the crust which is the upper section of the earth below the crust is the upper mantle below that is the lower mantle below that is the outer core which is even hotter but the inner core is hotter than the sun's surface. Sheesh. Well, what else is there to explore? Well, we should probably try this. Ah, this is pretty cool. Let's try going into the Earth's inside. Over here we have the upper mantle, lower mantle, outer core and the inner core. Right here is the outer core and here is the inner core. Red hot. And when we go back to the surface, the, the landforms are basically flipped. So we should probably go back up. Here. So what do you want to see first? Let's check out the volcanoes. This is a shield volcano. Watch as it goes up and boom, it erupts. Lava and gas get spit straight out of the earth. Lava is basically magma when it reaches the surface. Magma is basically really, really hot molten rocks. A magma chamber is a chamber that holds magma. Here's the crust and here's igneous rock. What does igneous mean? Basically, it means formed by volcanoes. It's rock that's formed by magma. Cool magma. Let's see, what if we make it small? It becomes a shield volcano. But if we make it higher, it becomes a plug dome.
Sometimes ash can also come up from the from the volcano. Sorry. What? I'll make this volcano erupt and boom. Some ash can come out as well. As with shield volcanoes. Well, that probably won't happen. See that? There's no ash. Here's a cinder cone volcano. Containing tons of magma too. And its eruptions are super violent. But if we make it even higher, we get a stratovolcano. These volcanoes are really big and really dangerous. Living near one of these is basically death, near guaranteed, sorry. Anyways, let's go back and check out forest protection. Well, everyone knows one of the most important things to do for the world is to keep nature safe, of course. What we can do is put up nature reserves, areas where they can't log trees down. But when people do log down trees, it's bad for the environment. It can make the air go bad. It can even make us die. Not just you, us. So we have to do our best to protect our environment and to send out as many trees as we can. I mean, the only reason climate is getting worse is because we're chopping down the trees with absolutely no mercy. Sheesh, what is this, no mercy? I'm talking about the Santa you. I'm a huge fan of Undertale. But if we place construction, that automatically destroys nature, making it even worse for our environment. But placing nature reserves ensures that construction can't happen, as in less things to get damaged. Oh, that's a cool volcano. Now let's take a look at the, wow, that's some cool rock. Anyways, Let's go on to sand dune migration. Wind weathers, erodes, and deposits rock and sediment. Fast winds pick up sediment and deposit what they've picked up. In deserts, wind deposits sand into dunes. New dunes can shift and move within a person's lifetime. This is a sand dune, a hill of sand, basically. Okay, renewable energy seems like a good topic. When we burn fossil fuels, we produce greenhouse gases. Fossil fuels are called dirty energy sources because they put harmful pollutants into the atmosphere. Wind, solar, geothermal, and hydropower are clean and renewable.
Here's a charging station for electric cars. It's better if we all use electric cars rather than normal cars. Only because of the fact that electric cars are more eco-friendly. But I'll give you this. The more emissions we put in, the less we can save our Earth. You can see how the sky gets darker and darker. That's only because more and more heat is being captured into the atmosphere. It's being sent into the atmosphere. More and more sludge. More and more emissions. It's really sad, but we can combat it by putting out wind turbines charging stations and electric cars we should probably make electric cars cheaper and easier for people to access check it out the more wind turbines i put in the less the environment gets affected Let's check out earthquakes. Seems fun. This is a divergent boundary. This is what an earthquake can do. Earthquakes are basically the shifting of two tectonic plates. Earthquakes happen as a result of plate movements. The boundaries or edges of the plates aren't smooth. They have faults or breaks in the rock as plates move their edges slide next to each other. Whoa! So what's this epicenter in focus? The focus is the origin of the earthquake, the center of the earthquake. And the epicenter is the ground center of the earthquake. This is the fault Okay, let's check out what happens inside a divergent boundary. Generate enough energy and you can do things like this. Ooh. Now, check this out. One of the plates goes downwards while the other goes inwards. This is a transform boundary. Generate enough energy and... Oh! This time, this time around, they move sideways, not downwards and up. They move sideways. Watch. I'll make this very clear for you. See that? They move sideways. Now let's check this out. A convergent boundary. Let's generate an earthquake. So this is what a conversion boundary looks like. Basically, they slam into each other. Ooh, a landslide. Gravity moves everything down towards the center of the Earth. Weathering breaks down the rocks. 
and then gravity pulls the rocks down. Sometimes gravity pulls lots of big rocks and sediment down quickly in a landslide, which is what's happening right here. A landslide. All these rocks are getting pulled towards the earth very quickly. Very, very quickly. Let's check out biological weathering. Plant a seed in every section. And you can see here, the rock gets destroyed only because of the roots. The roots are prying through the rock. And they break the rocks. Simple, right? It really is. Wow, there are even things under the sea. Let's check this out. Marine conservation. Seems nice. Let's add some trash bins over here. Recycling bins. What happens if we add garbage to the ocean? Well, our beaches become worse and worse and worse. But if we take our garbage and put it into the recycling bins, watch, I'll show you exactly what happens. So we can reduce, reuse, and recycle our trash. I'll put that there. Reuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle. The three R's, something you all need to know. Trust me, it's important. See for spreading. Sometimes earth plates move away from each other. As they move, they create new ocean ranges, volcanoes, and new ocean floors. See that? <laughs> this ocean floor is made out of magma. The magma flows up, then comes out, and well, freezes. It doesn't really freeze, but it forms into solid rock that we call the ocean floor. Hot spots are extremely hot areas under the plates that produce tons of magma, which erupts through cracks in the crust. These small eruptions create underwater mountains that eventually rise and become volcanic islands. Like this, lava comes out and then forms into igneous rock. Again, and again, and again. At this point, check it out. The hot spot comes out and becomes a volcanic island. An island which is a volcano itself. Pretty surprising, is it? 
but let's go over to the other side. Beach erosion. In de deposition, rocks and sediment are dropped off in new locations. As sediment gathers in new places, it can create new landforms and change existing landforms. Strong winds can create waves. Waves can change a beach shape in a matter of months only. Dang, that's really fast. Cliff weathering. Earth forces can break, crack, crumble, or otherwise change rocks. This is called weathering. So when I make a wave, this rock becomes easier and easier to break. Until only a small bit of rock is left. We've only got about five more. Let's make this quick. River erosion. In erosion, earth forces move rocks and sediment. As water carves through earth's surface, it picks up and transports rocks and sediment. You can see it right here in action. Pretty cool, huh? Rock layers give scientists insight into Earth's history. Fossils, basically the petrified remains of prehistoric organisms, give us clues about living things that once inhabited Earth. Fossils also reveal how Earth's geography has changed over time. Check it out. A new rock stratum has formed. We're already in the Paleozoic era, so let's make some fossils. When this happens, a new layer of soil will form, basically rock strata. See, more sediment with hidden fossils underneath. I'll add some more organisms and wait for them to turn into fossils. Now we go into the Mesozoic era. Where we add more and more animals that turn into fossils. Now we'll add more and more animals that will turn into fossils in the Mesozoic era. Ice Age, I guess. A woolly mammoth, that's pretty cool. And we're now in the Cenozoic era. The very era in which we exist. Pretty cool, huh? River meandering. When it floods, a river will erode the land along its sides. When it dries, rocks and sediment are deposited in river beds. As it floods and dries over years, the land slowly changes. This time, it forms something called an oxbow lake. Once these two portions of the river join together, the remaining portion is called an oxbow lake and is dried until this happens. The river disconnects and forms a new river and an oxbow lake.
Glacier movement. A glacier is a large body of ice. When temperatures drop, a glacier advances. It erodes or picks up rocks and sediment in the part it carves underneath it. Move the glacier. How does a glacier act like a river? That's a good question, Tiny Bob. A glacier acts like a river in the way that they're both made out of water. That's pretty obvious because it's just a huge block of ice. And in the fact that they both move. Yeah, they're a body of water that moves. Except that the glaciers move when the temperatures drop. Last but not least, frost wedging. Let's fill this up with water and look at what happens. Ice forms and carves out a huge chunk of rock. Oh, seems like this rock is glitching. Sorry. That's all for now. I'll let you know when I can find more things like this to entertain you all while I teach you. Thanks for watching. And before you go. Oof, that doesn't work. Pretty sad. But thanks for watching anyways. It would really charm me if you could sur subscribe. It makes you have unspoken riz. Trust me, it does. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. See you in the next one.